Uh, What's going on, guys? And welcome back to our third Enzyme community call. This is already our third community call since this year as we've rolled out version two of Enzyme. And we got a lot of exciting things to share with you all from new feature releases to some incredible network statistics that of how we've been getting more and more traction. We got a guest coming in today and just a lot of exciting news of what the team has been working so hard on to keep pushing Enzyme forward. Uh, with me today is GL. Um, you can say hi real quick, one of our other um, Melod user representatives like myself. Yeah, hello, welcome all. Uh, yeah, excited to share the progress we made the past months in the Vos community call. I think a lot has been moving in the Enzyme protocol uh, and the future looks bright. Awesome, and Mona's also with us as well as a surprise guest. So let's jump right in. All right, so real quick, because we have to do this every single time, because sometimes there's new people here and we want to make sure that everybody knows what Enzyme is all about. So to keep it simple, Enzyme is the on-chain asset management protocol. That means in the future, let's take a few years out, any single financial institution, whether that's a, a fund, whether that's an LLC, that a DAO that wants to have treasury management, any single financial company can essentially have their assets managed on-chain with an, with an Enzyme vault. So, and that's used for both parts. On one hand, the investors. If you're an investor, what, two of the most important things are transparency and also trust. Where you know exactly, hey, what trades are happening? You know, what is the actual performance like? And also knowing that the money that's in there is in safe custody, that the fund manager can't just, you know, walk away with it. This is two of the biggest issues with the traditional financial system when it comes to funds. Um, so with, as an investor, first of all, you can join funds with approval track record, when you see the track records, nobody can make them up. This is all on chain. Ethereum doesn't lie. Secondly, it's available 24 seven, right? So if you want to you know, invest in a fund on a Sunday night, you can. Uh, and also you can see the, the performance on a real time basis, essentially, which is incredibly fast compared to the traditional fund world. I, I run a traditional fund myself. And with us, oftentimes we have to do monthly statements, monthly NAV, net asset value. And sometimes fund administrators take 45 days to produce these statements. So it's incredible to be able to have this on a fast 24 seven basis. And of course it's transparent and non-custodial. Everything stays on chain. As for the builders, if you say like, hey, I want to use Enzyme for treasury management for my DAO. Or you say, hey, I want to start my own crypto hedge fund. Or in the future, it's just a fund in general because already now we have synthetic stocks via synthetics, for example. Um, so you can set up a vault in minutes, um, even though gas fees are a little bit higher right now, you can do so for a few hundred dollars, which is nothing compared to the tens of thousands of dollars you spend trying to set up a traditional fund structure. And by now we've got all kinds of DeFi integrations, and this is only expanding from lending via Aave on Compound, pools like Uniswap, trading, Paraswap, Uniswap, synthetics, and so much more. And of course, by now we also scale to over 200 tokens. Next slide. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can go to like uh, some network stats update. Felix, I'll uh, yeah. let you have a go at it. Okay. So in terms of network stats, uh, first of all, the monthly growth in funds has been amazing. First of all, we gained over 47% of funds. And I love to see this because, you know, initially when we saw the first slope in January, you could attribute it to, you know, version two launching and maybe a lot of the version one funds migrating over to version two. But we've been on a consistent slope of new funds signing up all after and over and over and over, even though we're now officially, you know, three months after version two launch. So this, in fact, it doesn't look to be slowing. In fact, it's actually ac accelerating to a degree. So, oh yeah, GL, maybe you can hit uh, waiting room. There is some people waiting. Um, so yeah, we increased by 42, 47%. In terms of AUM, we saw the biggest growth ever in dollar terms. Uh, which on one hand, of course, some can be attributed to, you know, DeFi and Ethereum gaining some value, but they didn't grow anywhere near what, um, what Enzyme grew in terms of 184%, which is a combination of both new funds joining, but also our existing funds are becoming bigger and bigger. When I first looked into Enzyme, there was less than $1 million in TBL. Now there's several funds with multi-million dollar AUMs. So it's exciting to see both the growth of the amount of funds, but also the size of funds. Because as we start having the first million dollar funds, you know, they really become proof of concept that you can run 
a fund through Enzyme. And just an, as an overview, uh, actually for maybe a couple, for like a day, we cracked the 30 million uh, AUM mark. We're now sitting right about 28 million six, which is amazing, which is again, more than 30 times as much as when I started first looking into Enzyme, which was not even one year ago. So one year ago, I believe in June, we cracked the 1 million mark. Today, we're sitting at 30, which is just incredible growth for the network. And the same thing goes for deposits. It's in, back in version one, the vault number and the deposit number used to be almost the same, where for every vault, there was one investment. By now, I love to see the fact that actually we have more than twice the amount of deposits, which means there's also an entire user base now using Enzyme for investments versus just fund managers setting up their own vehicles. Yeah, that's right. Um, also, something we didn't mention here, but the trading uh, volume also went up quite a bit. So they're not only more funds, but they're also more actively managing their positions, uh, probably because we added a lot of new assets and stuff like that, which really, um, yeah, give a big advantage um, to fund managers. Um, so I would like to go over some of these uh, new features and improvements that were launched since March. One of the big ones is the integration of Aave. So Aave is a decentralized uh, borrowing and lending platform. And the integration of this enables fund managers to earn extra yield on top of their holdings. So if you hold stable coins or any of these other assets uh, listed here, there are about 20 different assets you can deposit into Aave using your Enzyme uh, vault and earn additional yield, which is a really nice way for like your long-term holds that you're not gonna be trading uh, each day or uh, at the moment, and you want to generate some additional yield on top of them. So this is on top of the integrations with Compound Finance and Alpha Homora, which were already available. There are some other stuff that happened too. For instance, the launch of Paraswap version four. This means that uh, the trades that happen in Enzyme, starting from a few days ago, this was, uh, will be cheaper and will be executed at a better price. Uh, even like doing a Uniswap trade will be cheaper using the Paraswap adapter than uh, Uniswap itself, which is a really nice uh, feature. What else happened? Yes, we had the Enzyme SDK released. So this is an open source library, which you can use to build a trading bot on Enzyme. So you don't have to manage all the positions yourself if you don't want to. If you know a bit how to uh, program and run code, you can build a bot to do this automatically for you. Obviously, you will still need to pay the cost costs associated with the trades, uh, but it can take a, a, a bit of um, workload off your shoulder as a manager and allows you to also respond faster to like flash crashes and stuff like that. We also added a new reward step uh, for yield farming. So in the app, you can now uh, click in your vault, go to the reward step and see the comp tokens you have accumulated. If you're, for instance, using the compound finance adapter or the curve rewards in case you're uh, using the curve uh, finance adapter. There is also support added for the Coinbase wallet because a lot of investors, they don't uh, like to use or don't know how to use MetaMask, but many people are familiar with Coinbase. So if you have the Coinbase wallet, you can access Enzyme through it, make investments, even manage a complete fault through it. Just go to the Enzyme website through the browser in that wallet and you'll be able to connect. There were also a few tokens added. I think um, a lot more will be added in the future, but now we also have Alpha, Perp, Rune, Badger, and the Graph token. I think like five out of, uh, out of six made like, um, like double digit gains uh, the past week or the past month. Um, they've been quite well performing. And then I hand it over to Felix again for the council initiatives. Nice. Yeah, so as you guys know, Enzyme is run by DAO, the Enzyme Council. And, you know, our, our goal is always to kind of listen to the, the members and see what are, you know, what are some of the biggest concerns. And the first of which uh, has, of course, lately been, one click, gas reimbursements. We know it is rather expensive right now to trade on DeFi in general. 
Um, and so we decided that the, the most important thing until there's layer two, until there are you know, some better ways for us to scale or maybe gas fees go down a little bit, we're gonna continue to reimburse gas. So in March, we distributed $20,000 worth of MLN and we're actually doubling that for April. So for the month of April, there will be $40,000 worth of gas fees re uh, reimbursable on Paraswap so far. So this can be up to 50% of your gas expenses that you do on Paraswap over Enzyme in the month of April. To claim, make sure to sign that claim transaction between May 1st and May 8th. Because, you know, of course we won't distribute all the money. So we're not just gonna like, you know, um, uh, earmark it and letting it sit around for the person that doesn't claim it. Um, it has to be claimed in that period. Yes, maybe as a side note, this will not cost you any money. It's just a, a signing of a message with your wallet. It's not uh, actually executing a transaction. So it will be totally free for you as a manager. So there's no reason not to do it. Yeah, and if there's any other feedback you guys have in order to help us, you know, um, you know, if you say like, hey, we're using this uh, protocol a lot, we would love to also reduce those gas fees. Give us a feedback because we're trying to pick more partnerships with the networks that we're currently working with to maybe do some kind of mutual deal where we can get those gas prices down for you to bridge the get time until the real scaling is there. In terms of the trading contest, that was won by Sloth Capital. They made a 77% monthly performance, monthly return, and the biggest positions were MLN, which is good, Link and Maker. Congrats to Sloth team. Love to see more and more of these trading competitions. Um, as I think it really brings some life to the Enzyme ecosystem and really shows what the, the, the platform is capable of even for tracking things like the sharp ratios and so forth. And last but not least, NZIP8 passed. So for those that are not familiar with what these NZIP stand for, these are enzyme improvement proposals. Um, NZIP7, for example, or formerly known as MIP7 was the tokenomics proposal, NZIP8 is a proposal to reduce council compensation. So currently council compensation is funded by a part of the inflation pool. And we decided to cut it by as much as 80% down, uh, which is simply you know, our, an effort on our end to help make sure that we have good stewardship of these funds. And in fact, that will allow us to reduce that inflation pool uh, rather significantly and either use those funds for other incentives to like like initiatives like for example the gas compensations or burn them at the end of the year if we don't need them thereby helping reduce supply further and last but not least one more uh, we also set up a two hundred fifty thousand dollar buck bounty on immunify so if you have noticed yet enzyme takes security very seriously we've engaged i'm not sure if i'm able to mention them all yet but we've engaged two different um to different uh, smart contract auditors to make sure that all the technology on Enzyme is completely safe and we and there are no exploits because as the AUM of Enzyme keeps going up and up and up and we're now closing on 30 million, that's becoming more and more important to us. So on top of the two audits that we're doing, on top of an entire technical council that's reviewing the code, we've also now set up this $250,000 bug bounty on Immunify where essentially people like anybody in the public is incentivized to discover vulnerabilities and you know let us know about them. And then gorilla funds. So as you might know, so there's the MIPs, which are the improvement proposals, and then there are the funding proposals. Okay, so yeah, I guess in the past it was easy MFP, now it's NFP, how we pronounce that. And the goal of the, uh, the funding proposals is that anybody in the community that has an idea to bring value to the Enzyme ecosystem can apply for funding from the council and we can use the inflation pool to grant those uh, grant funding on a case by case basis where we believe that it will add value to the enzyme ecosystem whether that's the, the the community the tokens the technology you name it and what we did with gorilla funds first of all gorilla funds has been building on top of enzyme for quite a while now they started doing this as a side project um, i believe last year already and now they came to us with a proposal and what they're looking to build is a customizable fund page builder for managers. So that way you can essentially have like a, your own website for the fund, but with a lot of functionalities such as, for example, uh, fiat to crypto gateways, meaning you investors can actually invest with dollars. You will have identity provider, like a KYC tool that will enable you to actually make sure that you're compliant with your local jurisdiction. So for example, you know, collect 
IDs and proof of residences and so forth that will enable you to really run a fully compliant business. Um, it also enables one click investments and redemptions, just making it simple because the whole idea of Enzyme 2 is that you, the more technically savvy, the more crypto native person is helping manage money for people that just aren't. So the goal of this page will be really for you to have a front facing page for people that might not be crypto native and that will enable you to get fiat to crypto, KYC tools, one click investments, uh, have your own standalone website. And the way we're paying for this is from the inflation pool. It's 3000 MLN, but it is locked for two years with my, based on milestones. So I think we found a really great way for us to, you know, Gorilla Funds bring value to the ecosystem, while at the same time, we, the council is enforcing high quality standards. So we, everybody wins, wins, wins. Yeah, indeed. It has been uh, often requested by managers, these tools to more easily onboard people who are not so crypto savvy. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. Um, so what's related to this, um, we now also have a series of YouTube tutorials available on how to create uh, Enzyme Vault or how to deposit into it and how to trade and manage the funds within it. So if you're interested in that, um, go check it out on the Enzyme Finance YouTube channel. There are some other videos too. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it's quite easy. Just click on one of the links that pop up below here um, and have a look at it. There you will also find a sneak peek of the new user interface that Avantgarde Finance is working on. So the main developer. Um, as you know, a lot of new features got added recently and the current interface doesn't very well accommodate for it. So for instance, just today we had the release of a uh, Curve Finance uh, lending pools, which you can uh, find in the provide liquidity tab, if I'm not mistaken. Um, on the old interface, but there's a new one in the works. Um, so, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure if the video, um, the video might not play. So for everybody interested in this, I suggest you just check it out on uh, YouTube. There are some quite new cool visualizations on how the front page looks. For instance, you will not only be able to track the share price like now, but you will also be able um, to have a breakdown of the different assets therein. So you can see uh, how they evolve over time and like which assets are generating um, like a good performance in your vault or which are maybe underperforming and you can kick out. So definitely have a look at that if you uh, are interested. And you can also have a one-on-one -on -one session with the UX designer to help shape the um, yeah, really the interface. So if you have some suggestions, sure, um, check it out and send us your feedback. And now let me find him in the guest list. So uh, we have a special guest coming up um, from Apophis DeFi. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, one second. Or maybe you can raise your hand if you're listening. Okay. Son of Ishtar, I've invited you um, to unmute yourself. Yeah, let me try again. Hello? Okay, we can um, skip to the next item maybe and uh, we'll come back to this uh, after Mona gives a small explanation and refresher on the progress with a uh, version three release, uh, Zulu. So let me get Mona on stage. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I see you and hear you. Awesome. Thanks for the update so far. I don't know if it helps, but son of Ishtar, you could, you you have you get prompted to unmute. I don't know if you saw the pop up. 
um, but maybe we can try that again after. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm giving uh, an update on the Sulu release and how we're getting on so far. Um, we, uh, we gave a little update on this in the community call last month, and I think the idea was to give the community an update on how we're doing so far. The team have been working, uh, you know, tirelessly to bring uh, all the Sulu features and uh, hopefully you will have noticed uh, from social media and from some of the announcements recently that we're making uh, good progress on that front. Um, I think the one of the most, uh, maybe one of the biggest uh, parts of Sulu is uh, bringing, uh, borrowing and leverage to enzyme vaults. So the ability not just to lend via Aave and Compound, but also to borrow through the various borrowing and lending protocols, take leverage, what are the different implications, what parts of the vault need to change, what kind of uh, considerations do we need to take into account for, uh, for um, uh, security and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so that's probably been one of the, 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 the biggest chunks of work uh, in terms of features, but happy to report that the team is making really good progress on that front. Um, and uh, things uh, look on track. So borrowing, uh, I think, has been in the works for the last three or four weeks and uh, close to being uh, wrapped up. Um, on the shares transferability side, uh, again, uh, that was a feature which the community have been asking us to enable for a really long time. Uh, that's also on track. Uh, bringing shares transferability has several knock-on effects, which we think um, will will uh, help ease uh, user pain in several places. So it will help enable cheaper investments from a gas perspective um, by enabling OTC deals and um, you know, uh, secondary market uh, trading of uh, vault tokens. So, uh, so that's really great. Um, it will also enable like new types of functionality. So one um, feedback we've received a lot from the community is that Enzyme seems uh, slightly more uh, useful for actively managed funds because for passively management funds, we don't have an auto rebalancer uh, or actually you, you can develop one using the Enzyme SDK, but uh, we don't have one built in for you like an auction system or anything like that. So, um, but however, when you have um, shares transferability, you'll be able to pre-seed a vault and then create a secondary liquidity market by using a Uniswap pool or whatever. Um, and you'll never have to rebalance again because you just have to set the rebalance once. And then from that point on, uh, the shares can be transferred to third parties without the need to rebalance very often. So that's a huge gas savings to the vault manager and, um, and to the uh, investors themselves. Uh, and obviously that all trickles down into performance. And then so also performance fees, management fees, are healthier as well. Um, and, uh, and the last kind of uh, part that is um, linked to that, um, I guess, is the idea of being able to withdraw in a single asset. Uh, so as you know, uh, at the moment, when you withdraw from an enzyme uh, vault, or when you redeem from an enzyme vault, you receive a slice of the portfolio. Um, and uh, we've had a lot of feedback from people saying, and we totally understand that feedback, that people want to be able to redeem in a single asset. Um, and that makes total sense. And uh, we're still um, targeting to, to provide that functionality with the Sulu release. Um, in terms of the integrations, um, we promised a few. Uh, I'm happy to say the Aave uh, lending integration went live a few weeks ago. So I uh, can see already that a lot of you are using it and really excited uh, to see the traction in that. Um, just today, we launched uh, the Curve, um, some of the a selection of Curve pools integrations. Um, I'm extremely excited about that. I know that Gio um, touched on that earlier when he was talking, but there are so many, there are so many reasons I'm excited about that. It's um, you know, if we start with um, the idea that Curve is a, a protocol that you can provide liquidity to, um, you earn a share of the transaction fees that go through the pool, but you also uh, are eligible to earn rewards in Curve tokens um, uh, if you stake your LP tokens. And we've, um, 
with the with the curve pool integrations that we've provided, um, we've uh, created um, a functionality that as soon as you deposit into a curve pool to provide liquidity, you're immediately auto staking. So you basically don't need to take any extra action yourself. Um, and then also, as many of you will know, uh, farming uh, strategies are very popular and also very profitable in the curved ecosystem. And you can now use an enzyme vault to farm very efficiently because we have the um, claim rewards and reinvest, which we've conveniently wrapped up into one transaction to make life easier for the vault manager. And you can also, if you prefer to claim rewards and um, invest or swap into a specific token, you can do that essentially at no cost as long as the gas cost doesn't exceed the, the uh, reward value. So, so that's uh, something we're super excited about. We've started with the Seth pool and the Ave pool, um, but you'll uh, be seeing more pools added in the coming weeks. Um, and a last kind of note on Curve is additional to the farming aspect or the um, pools aspect, which we're probably, uh, which we're very excited about. You also have the ability to trade against Curve pools in the trading tab of the Enzyme Vault. Um, and as many of you know, um, you know there's, a, there's close to $6 billion of uh, total value locked in the Curve pool. So the liquidity is really, um, really, really high. And, and that means that very often um, the, the slippage you get is, um, or the, the rates you get are better uh, than you'll get on other protocols. So, so we're really happy to have all of, you know, all of that functionality in, in the curve pools. We'll keep you posted on pools as they, as they come. Um, and the next one we're going to move on to is the idle integration. So um, more on that in the coming days, and then we'll follow that with um, the balancer v2 integration, which I think uh, I just heard from Fernando yesterday is going live um, uh, still it, like it's still targeted for April. So so we're really um, really psyched about all of those features. Um, I think uh, maybe just a couple of words on timing because um, a lot of you have been asking when when Sulu. Um, as you'll notice, like some parts of Sulu will just be released as and when they're ready, especially the integration side of things. Uh, but the actual um, the actual release we're targeting for uh, end of May uh, audit is booked, data is secured. Um, we'll keep you po posted on how that goes. Obviously, things come up sometimes that we don't foresee, but um, so far it's looking um, looking quite um, likely that we'll we'll be targeting an end of May release. And last but not least, just wanted to share like a small little anecdote, like from the curve announcement. Recently, you know, I've I've been looking for a way to articulate what these curve in, curve pool integrations mean for Enzyme for a while now, and it was really nice to see Curve themselves um, <laughs> be able to articulate it better than us. Um, they referred to uh, Enzyme with the curve pool integrations we've done today as a urine factory, and I thought that was like a really nice way to think about it, like basically empowering anyone, regardless of whether they're a developer or not, to be able to create their own urine type strategies on enzyme and uh, the more you know the more functionality the more integrations that we build in like this uh, the more the more this will kind of become clear um, but I think that already today uh, we're starting to see what this you know what this could become yes Mona thanks for the updates uh, really nice uh, I'm really also like excited about the Curve one um, because maybe to illustrate the power of it, for instance, the Curve Ave pool, um, you can both earn double digits on your uh, yield on stable coins, also earn swap fees on Curve. Uh, on top of that, earn uh, Curve incentives. And if you're a vault manager, you also get some performance fees. So it's like this uh, all <laughs> things uh, in one um, to really make it a lot more efficient than just holding DAI or another stable coin or even just depositing in Aave. It really helps to like get everything uh, out of the funds that are inside the vault. Okay, cool. I'm so looking forward to seeing the rest of uh, Sulu appear uh, as time passes by. So I think now we can give the word back. Um, oh, let me get back here. Okay, son of Ishtar, <laughs> are you there? Y 
you should um, be able to unmute yourself right now. Hi guys, can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Awesome, thanks a lot for letting me in finally. Um, really appreciate it. I'm super excited about what I've just heard from one and the team about the uh, upcoming upgrades. So this is amazing. Uh, looking forward to implement that into our own strategies. I'll maybe share my screen and um, show some of the things that I wanted to show you and that will be able um, to provide some of you with a background of who we are and what we are. Um, above is DeFi, as, as some of you have uh, seen, um, has recently popped up on the um, Enzymes first page. Uh, we are right here right now, um, number eight by Hello, AUM. Um, effectively, Apophis DeFi is a non custodial uh, portfolio that has been launched by Build Finance. Build Finance is a DAO, so it's a slightly different um, uh, structure to other funds that has been around uh, Enzyme. Um, so, this product has been set up in collaboration between. Um, uh, several community members of the DAO. You can read kind of a lot of information here, uh, as well as um, Enzyme themselves and Unslashed Finance, who is an uh, insurance provider, um, DeFi smart contract cover. Um, uh, Apophis DeFi is supported by several uh, known entities in this space, including uh, Mark Taylor uh, from Ave and Loi Lu. Uh, Cyber uh, Nansen um, uh, on chain analytics platform and Vifat uh, from the Vifat.tools. As some of you may, may know him from your farming activities, um, he is one of the portfolio advisors for uh, of his DeFi. A um, couple words on build finance so you understand who we are. So, this is a DAO um, that's been around since September 2020. Um, I have become sort of an active community member there and slightly and um, over the time grew more and more uh, kind of passionate about what they do. It's basically uh, an avenue for anyone with any ideas to come over and build projects. And if the community is kind of wanting to support, they'll be able to give you development advice, maybe finding uh, other things. There are a few other active projects right now, uh, such as Matrix Exchange, uh, Basis Group, and that down. Uh, and we have recently launched Apophis uh, DeFi. So Apophis DeFi, Apophis is uh, an ancient edict and a deity uh, of um, of chaos, and this is exactly how we see uh, free markets. And DeFi as the ultimate representation of free markets. Um, it's always in, in chaotic motion. It, it never sleeps. There are no borders, no constraints. So this is our attempt at um, tackling down chaos and bringing in some structure. Um, there are several, uh, obviously, platforms that are out there that allow for asset management, uh, but we decided uh, that Enzyme is one of the most suitable for professional um, funds management. Uh, I have been working with Mona in my real work time, in my, in my real life uh, work for quite a while, and have been um, watching the progress that Enzyme team has put um, uh, has done, and it's pretty impressive to what they have accomplished. And right now, it's really one stop. Uh, shop for all of DeFi and very easy solution for people who don't have time uh, or willingness to, you know, uh, look after different um, uh, happenings around DeFi um, um, ecosystem, and they can just simply outsource to a portfolio management a portfolio manager of their choice based on their risk appetites and uh, investment preferences. Um, the way we usually describe Enzyme, it's it's an eBay for funds. You know, uh, you wake up one day, as uh, that famous Monas articles said, and you want to deploy a fund or you want to uh, invest in a fund, and you can just browse, select what's you, 
and uh, you know, next minute you are in and you have exposure to whatever assets you feel um, interested in. Um, we have um, on our uh, portfolio management uh, set up um, three people uh, who are looking after the fund, uh, the portfolio, myself, uh, I'll be doing most of the decision making. Uh, for assets allocation and rebalancing. As a portfolio manager, however, I have two, um, what they call them, uh, sanity check uh, advisors. One of them is Vifat Tools, who is always across most uh, you know, farming yielding opportunities. And second is uh, metric uh, exchange developer and 0x DAO um, delegate 0x uh, SHA. Uh, so he is able to provide me with um, technical advice on how things run and uh, where the risks are. Um, in terms of the thesis, we are uh, um, not a trading. Um, uh, this is not a trading setup. This is more like a long-term uh, overview and belief on that DeFi is the real great reset as opposed to centrally architected and imposed agendas that is coming out of um, known entities uh, in Europe and uh, America. I would think that the future is decentralized and this whole era is about decentralization of money and uh, value. And this is a great opportunity to take uh, bet on those platforms that will be uh, key uh, in accomplishing this um, thesis and enzyme for example one of them so we kind of put the money where our mouth is and enzyme is part of our portfolio um since as i have been involved in uh, portfolio management uh, in non-defi space uh, i've been dealing with a lot of traditional folk and the way they set up portfolio management so we set up our own investment strategy in the way that it's appealing to um, people from traditional finance. We have quite an elaborated you know, portfolio construction methodology as well as asset allocation by classes, uh, by different strategies. And this is where Enzyme is helpful to us in terms of achieving what we were trying to achieve. Um, specifically, we will be going after two various um, um, return re, um, strategies that will aim to bring the return. One of them will be capital growth, and one of them will be obviously farming uh, or uh, providing yield on the assets that we go uh, long on. Um, you know, as as you already know, we can already go long and short uh, through synthetics and versus. Staking is available. Liquidity provision is available uh, now to Curve um, and Uniswap, which is I'm super excited to track Curve as of right today. And just the last missing piece is uh, lending and leverage, because um, we'll be um, hope, we're hoping to tap into um, borrowing and be able to increase our exposure. Um, Interestingly, so we've been looking on how to engage people into um, participating in enzyme pools, as you understand, um, due to its um, architecture, enzyme maybe is not as appealing to define natives because it has very strict controls in terms of assets and protocols they plug into. Um, so it's more um, relevant to people who uh, don't have time uh, or, or knowledge or skills to know uh, learn about DeFi. For people like Vifat, for example, who is always in the first in the next hottest farm, um, it's slightly different. So what we decided to do is to split performance play basically with the fees, trying to either tokenize them or split them the way that it's... Um, taps into game theory a little bit and incentivizes LPs uh, in return. So at the moment we have part of the performance fee uh, going back to buy back built token of the market and distributing it back to depositors or the LPs. And that's in, in this scenario, we kind of benefit in both the LPs and build DAO indirectly. We're making our depositors being our stakeholders essentially so any other benefits that comes from the build out 
uh, um, naturally comes available to uh, our depositors. Well, this is only the first stage of the setup and we'll be playing with it later on and we'll, look, um, we'll explore of how we can tokenize or do something interesting with the fees because uh, it defies essentially the stakeholder capitalism, right? And um, there shouldn't be, or middleman middleman fees should be as uh, minimized as possible with fee sharing available to larger stakeholders and those who bring the most value. So we will be exploring that. And this is uh, where our partnership with Unslashed Finance uh, comes handy. Um, so I, I suggest you to look at their website at some point. Uh, so in addition to providing a very flexible model for uh, purchasing smart smart contract cover uh, for protocols such as Enzyme. Um, they also have very good intelligence uh, in terms of um, token structure and, and understanding uh, how to engage a community. So we're working closely with them trying to figure out uh, what can be done. There are other more interesting things that uh, we working on with them as an insurance provider uh, that would benefit our uh, depositors and us as a portfolio manager, but this is kind of early stages and we cannot um, openly discuss this. But I would suggest to look, um, um, go on at Slash and have a, have, have a look. Um, definitely, if you're a portfolio manager, I do recommend uh, always you know, uh, advise your LPs about the risks, the systematic uh, risks of the space. And this is where, you know, partnership with insurance providers um, can greatly add value to, to the space, especially as we move on towards um, attracting more and more um, highly sophisticated players. As it was mentioned earlier in this call, um, you know, and not far away is the day when we will have our real world institutions joining in and maybe BlackRock will have its fund and maybe uh, Bill Gates' family office will be depositing into, the, into JP Morgan's funds, you know, in, in a similar way. And those guys have certain needs and it's great to see that there is a natural collaboration between Enzyme and Slash taking place uh, where they uh, you know, look after all aspects of assets, asset management. Um, we also have done a slightly different approach to launching. Uh, we, we raised um, uh, half million from C partners and then opened another uh, half a million for community to contribute and after that once we reached the target we closed the deposits um we had our minimum and maximum kind of uh, deposits so there are a few reasons for doing a phased approach firstly we wanted to limit uh, exposure that uh, people unfamiliar with if, uh, in time can have <clears throat> um secondly we want to um, build a track record uh, that's visible on chain and certainly obviously we are working with Enzyme and, and Flash finalizing some of the partnership uh, engagements, waiting on Sulu to be uh, enrolled, uh, rolled out uh, properly so by phase two or phase three we'll be able to uh, offer more comprehensive investment strategies so that's why it's really great to see the curve is well, one item down. Um, um, and additionally, I would like to say that um, one of our strategies in terms of attracting capital to um, Enzyme is not only um, going after individual investors who are either new to DeFi or don't have time in DeFi uh, to, to deal with DeFi. There are also um, a lot of um, DeFi native protocols who sit on massive treasuries as other type of financial providers who are um, friendly to crypto and who wants to have exposure. However, all of them are looking for non-custodial, fully transparent ways of onboarding onto Enzyme. And uh, you, know, you can have um, a fully managed portfolio if it's not properly set up. And you know, and Enzyme just takes away so much pain from the back office, mid office, mid office consideration. Um, so we'll be looking to working with 
several partnerships that we already have lined up, um, trying to onboard more capital as, as our phases go by, as and as Enzyme protocol uh, evolves. Uh, looking forward to the new UI view. If you guys haven't seen that video uh, that was mentioned earlier in the call, I strongly do recommend it. It's the, the UI upgrade is going to be uh, fantastic, so we're really excited about it. And uh, on the behalf of Bill Dow and me personally, I'd like to thank um, uh, and, and Team Enzyme for their support throughout the launch. It's been super uh, smooth process, and yeah, literally all it takes just click a couple of clicks of a button, and the fund is deployed. The Momo, the, the largest challenge is really uh, coordinating press releases and uh, you know setting the word out, uh, which is which is not, has nothing to do with uh, enzyme itself. Um, yeah, and anyone has any questions, though, especially those who are still planning to um, set up funds, always happy to share notes and kind of discuss ideas of what sort of strategies are available through enzyme. Looking forward to the fund of funds and shared transferability uh, features. Um, we do have interest in allocating into asset managers who have very specific, uh, narrow um, investment strategies uh, that we kind of that, that don't fall under our uh, immediate mandate. We'll be able to allocate into those funds. So there is a lot of natural synergy between um, portfolio managers themselves. So happy to explore. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I think for um, time, we'll have to. Yeah. Uh, um, really nice uh, for the explanation. Maybe we can come back to a few items in the questions. And for instance, also. Yes, like, thanks a lot. Yeah, uh, about uh, unslashed integration, because it's really nice. Indeed, you can get insurance for running your funds. Um, so in case something does go wrong with one of the integrations or whatever, your own security, you are covered. Okay. Um, maybe also worth repeating is that we have this um, feature request page. Uh, it's available at enzyme.canny.io. And there you can request um, new features to be added into Enzyme in addition to the ones already uh, being planned for Zulu. So um, if you have any suggestions or things that could be done better, make sure to pop a request in there. Um, for instance, we also have um, some other things coming up, uh, like the ability to change the fees in a fund, to have multiple addresses for receiving the fees. Also, um, yeah, a lot of uh, new assets that are uh, being considered for listing, blog posts, which will be added in a new uh, user interface and more of the good stuff like that. So I think with this, we can um, continue with the questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them into the chat. So um, I see Luca Massini asked whether Funds that are lent on Aave or Compound are redeemable at any point or whether they are under a lockup period. Uh, now, the good news is like at any moment, you can exit uh, an enzyme fund completely. So there is no lockup uh, of any tokens. You can access them immediately. The same for the curve uh, pool tokens. As an investor, you can always get out and get your fair share of the, of the fund. Awesome guys, are there any other questions? And also feel free to provide suggestions as we are closing in on Zulu. You know, we're also of course keeping an eye out and ear out now for what would be coming up next after Zulu. So especially because there's so many vault managers in here, your opinions matter more than anybody's really because you're the actual users. So always love to hear from you. Let's see. Cathedral Capital asks, wouldn't there be lockups if leverage borrowing is introduced? I think the idea here would be to also tokenize the debt positions. Uh, um, I'm not sure exactly how it would technically work. I'm not a, a developer, but I know, for instance, Aave, they have um, 
they give you a token that represents your depth position. So in case the same pattern is followed, I can imagine it would be something like you when you withdraw from the funds, you will also get some of the um, some of the debt uh, that's associated with it. But don't take my word for it. <laughs> um, there's some um, like actual developers of the platform uh, in the Discord and the Telegram that can gladly help you uh, answer those questions. Safir, uh, interesting question. Sorry, from Theophil. What about pull together integration? Would it be possible to sponsor someone to work on that adapter? That's a very good question. So it's something that's not on the roadmap, but I would also like to see something like that. So it would be really cool actually. Um, and we are an open platform. So if you have, uh, or if you are a developer or you know a team that might be interested in working on something, you can uh, always put up a proposal and it will be voted on in the council. There are still multiple millions of development funds available actually. So if you're a team and you get a nice ID for building something, um, just suggest it and who knows, you will get funded for it. Um, somebody asked us if we can about if there is more plans for adding more tokens to which Mona said, we're always adding tokens weekly. And she also shared the candy link. So if you want to see some tokens be listed, best way to do so is to list it on Canny and the more people vote for it, the higher the chances. Do keep in mind, we, as of right now, we still need Chainlink oracles uh, in order to add assets. But if they are highly requested, if everybody wants that one token, there is the possibility of setting up the Chainlink oracle. But that's the process of how that works. And somebody asked, oh, that person specifically asked, what about like Adam and HBAR? Um, something to keep in mind is that those two are layer one tokens, which means they're not on, they're not ERC20, as far as I know. I don't know if they have ERC20 versions, um, but my guess is we would need wrapped Atom or wrapped HBAR before that can become tradable on Enzyme, because keep in mind everything so is built on ETH. Tokens. For instance, uh, you can also um, buy synthetic dots, so like the Polka dot token uh, through the synthetics adapter. Um, maybe also a big disclaimer, none of the things we say is financial advice. We're like not financial advisors. Um, it's just for informational purposes only. But you can invest into like different layer one tokens through the synthetics adapter, but probably not Atom and HBAR at the moment, yes. He asks, Q1, when we will be able to exit vaults in denominated currency rather than current investments? That's tricky because that would that would be very gas intensive is my guess because you're likely making, it could be that you're doing a dozen transactions to exit uh, because keep in mind, let's say you have 10 different assets in there for you to exit into, let's say Ethereum, every a small piece of all those 10 would need to be sold um, which depending on how liquid some of these are could cause market impact. Um, and also, of course, it's multiple transactions that could be thousands of dollars in gas fees. So right now it simply removes a portion, but I don't know if that's on the roadmap, uh, either GL or Mona. Um, I think there is um, on the roadmap, once the token transferability is released, you could uh, even do things like at, uh, as your, if you're a manager, create a Uniswap pool of your enzyme fund token, uh, provide liquidity, and people can exit into Ether or any other asset as long as there is sufficient liquidity. But that will uh, only be enabled after the Zulu release. So once the shares become transferable, uh, you could have cool things like that. You could also do something like um, trade them on a decentralized exchange on a layer two. So you can have people join for really cheap into your fund. That's things that are technically possible to do in the future, um, but they are not possible at the moment yet. Uh, we also have a question about Tobias, why he cannot access all tokens available on Uniswap, even when Uniswap has been integrated. This has to do with the uh, security, basically. Uh, it's to avoid that a fund manager can drain a fund, for instance, where there is a low liquid token. And it's a, a common attack that could be performed. Otherwise, we really want to make a platform where there you don't have to rely on the um, reliability of the fund manager. But really, we want to enforce the security through the protocol, so your funds are always safe. 
All right, because otherwise the fund manager could just set up their own token, you know, buy up, uh, you know, buy with the fund, sell with his own tokens, and it's 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 just too easy. Not just that, I think also it's just re reduce the amount of rug pulls that. Uh, well, I I don't think there's been a single rug pull that an enzyme fund manager has been part of because everything is rather vetted. Of course, the goal would be long term to be as open as possible because this is open finance, decentralized finance. Um, but there will likely have to be some level of you know, approval processes, right? With the policies that investors know what are fund managers capable of doing. And then it just gets a little bit messier. So for now, this is kind of how we're approaching it. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I yeah. can just jump in and say a few words on that because that's actually been a really big topic for us internally recently. But I think um, the, the, the goal, or at least historically, the goal has always been to try and make Enzyme as trustless as possible from the manager to the investors so that there doesn't need to be um, you don't need to assume too much trust between investor and vault manager. Um, we we sort of uh, the more you know the more we sort of evolve and mature ourselves, the more we see uh, the limitations of that. And it's also it's really hard to imagine a world where um, we we can keep gas fees really low for users, scale um, and uh, uh, scale the asset universe uh, like to li less liquid tokens and keep that trustless uh, promise. So I think uh, most likely the, the direction will go in over time is, and, and you know, I know a lot of you have asked for additions in tokens that are less liquid. And one of the reasons that we insist that the token has a chain link price feed first is because it gives some uh, guarantees on like, the chain link process gives some guarantees on the quality of the price feed. Um, and it's less less easy to manipulate, but um, we we we're struggling to kind of keep all of these promises, like you know low gas fees, which is obviously very important in this environment, scaling the asset universe to less liquid assets, and keeping gas fees low by having you know fewer and fewer risk management policies. The, you know the 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 more you increase one of them, the more you decrease the trust aspect, or vice versa. And so uh, there's trade-offs to consider. And I think ultimately the, the end goal will be to have different kinds of vaults that serve different uh, kinds of needs and have different trust assumptions uh, embedded in them. And then the user ultimately decides. All right, yes, there's also absolutely. somebody that asked about layer two, maybe now that you unmuted, Mona can chime in on that too. Somebody asked if there's a timeline for layer two. I think she's muted again. Okay, let me check. Yeah, so um, I guess there's the sh like there's what's possible in the short term with layer two and what's possible like longer term. And I think um, the the reality is, I mean, you know, the the deploying the de deploying the protocol contracts on another chain right now just doesn't make a lot of sense because we are an asset management protocol, and most of the other options that we like aren't even live yet. And even if they were live, they'd probably start with very few assets to begin with. So, you know, we, we need to follow the assets. Um, we've, we've been getting, you know, the, the one kind of uh, scalable chain that we've seen traction in or that there has been traction in is Binance chain, but that fundamentally compromises on our decentralized promise. And I don't think we're willing to do that. So uh, we, will, we will keep a close eye on the progress in the polka dot power chains and the optimism and all of that kind of stuff. But just to emphasize like, you know, an entire redeployment of the protocol on another chain is not going to happen until we feel uh, uh, sure enough or confident enough that there's enough assets to manage there. However, in the meantime, short term, what could happen is you could imagine uh, when vault tokens are transfer transferable, uh, taking those vault tokens and putting them on a layer two solution, like diversifying, creating liquidity on a layer two solution in in those uh, like you know uh, rolled up in that chain, and basically people able to chain trade those uh, vault tokens at close to zero. I think it's zero gas. 
Um, and, uh, and, and that could be something that you could see very short term, I think, um, as soon as we have shares transferability, you know, it would, it, it would need to be initiated by the vault manager and it would, um, you know, there'd obviously need to be some coordination around liquidity, et cetera. But I think that's something we could see in a matter of weeks. Um, and I think an entire redeployment of Enzyme on another uh, more scalable option uh, will take um, many more months uh, from what we're seeing. Yes, thanks for that. I see we also have a question about um, whether somebody would need a license to open a fund or not. Um, so it's a question by Zeferkan Sakir, um, who is in Switzerland, if I'm not mistaken. And although I'm not like a legal advisor, um, I, it will depend on your jurisdiction, what you're allowed to do or not, especially when you open up a fund into the public. Um, it's something you, from a legal perspective, you won't be able to do in many jurisdictions without following uh, the guidelines associated with it. So I do suggest to consult like a lawyer um, about your local laws relating to managing other people's money, basically. Okay, I see a question about whether the front end will be open sourced for teams to build customized versions. So related to this, um, I know that there is a subgraph which is open sourced and which can be publicly queried. So in theory, you will already have all the available tools to build a custom front end. The front end itself um, that is live now, um, I'm sure Mona <laughs> might be better to answer this, um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's part of Avangard Finance. Same for the Gorilla Funds uh, page builder that is coming. There you will have the ability to customize your fund page, but um, yeah, I, I don't think those will be completely open source. I think uh, Felix just unmuted me, but yeah, just to echo chime in there. Uh, we don't have plans to open source the interface, uh, but uh, like like Jill said, there is a, you know, the, the subgraph is open source and we do have plans to um, create uh, like, you know, tools to help managers embed certain information in their uh, self-hosted uh, websites if that's what they want to do. And that's definitely on the, the roadmap not short term, but maybe slightly more medium term. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll keep everyone updated on that as and when. Okay. If there are no more questions coming into the chat, I think we might uh, be able to wrap up. We went a little bit over time already. One question from George. I think he's typing it right now. <laughs> Cathedral Capital also asks about tax implications and that will also depend on your personal situation. Um, so it's a bit hard to give some general advice on that topic. Yes, so George asks about any schedule about the integration with major exchanges. Um, I'm not sure whether you mean being able to trade on major exchanges or the listing of the Mellon token on exchanges. Um, but in the decentralized finance world, we're already um, yeah, partnered with um, multiple aggregators in which you actually plug into the biggest decentralized exchange platforms. Um, and Melon token itself is also uh, available on Kraken, for instance. Um, 
some ASEAN exchanges, uh, OKX, I think, uh, Huobi, um, some other ones. You can find all that info on like CoinGecko or other information sites. Okay. Felix, do you have any uh, remaining questions? Um, I don't see any more. I just went through them. The only thing I don't know if I mentioned was uh, Gordo asked about the batching investment process mentioned. Was the new batching investment process mentioned? That's the only one I don't know if it was addressed. It's, it wasn't mentioned because I think it still needs some more fine tuning. Uh, that was like the latest uh, info. So there was a, a, a new functionality. Well, it is still in the works. Um, it will just take a bit longer uh, before it's available. Uh, to really cut down on the investment costs for an investor. So the idea is uh, multiple investors would be able to batch their investment transactions um, and it would only cost the price of a regular ERC20 token or at least that's the aim. So it would be like a factor 10 cheaper than it is now. Um, but it's still being uh, worked on. Like, but it will it will come like um, the team is working hard to reduce the gas fees that investors have to pay. But we know it's a big concern. Um, that's yeah. So overall, a lot of exciting stuff happening. New features, Sulu's coming along outside, you know, uh, teams like Gorilla Funds building new products via the funding proposals. I know the, the council is really tightening up structure right now. We're cleaning up a little bit there and both in how things are run, cutting compensation. So far, I'm really excited for you know where Enzyme is going. I think we're just getting started, and like you guys are more important than anyone, anyone here to really let us know what you would like to see more of um, as we're looking into you know the next road ahead after Sulu, um, and just in general, even if it's not product based, but more so like some in terms of like guidance. What would you guys need to really help either you know attract more AUM to the platform? whether that's through your funds or through, um, you know, the tools you need, like what's stopping you right now, just let us know because that's, that's the best feedback we can get. And I appreciate that all of you guys came. I think we had a pretty good attendance today. And I think we're close to 60 at some point. So I'd love to see um, so much of the community show up. Do you want to unmute Mona for one more minute? Yeah. I don't know if you have final words. From our yes, just, uh, have a great week, everyone. Uh, we'll see you later in the yeah in the Discord and in the next community call. Um, do let us know like what you want to see improved, uh, so we'll make uh, work of it. Okay, have a good one, everybody. Awesome. Take care, guys.